Hello, Active Traders. This is Ken Calhoun from TradeMastery.com, and I'm joined by my colleague Tom Sosnoff from TastyTrade.com. Tom Sosnoff founded Thinkorswim in 1999 and TastyTrade in 2011. His options experience spans over 20 years as a market maker and trader on the CBOE. He's the co-CEO of TastyTrade and continues to drive innovation as co-host of TastyTrade Live. He's my favorite to watch on YouTube. Absolutely recommend uh, his content at the TastyTrade.com site and on his YouTube channel. So, hey, Tom, it's great to have you with us here today. Hey, Ken, how are you? Doing great, celebrating the holidays here. Hey, so the reason I asked you on the show today was to talk about your whole concept of trade small, trade often, because I found that that's one of the biggest challenges that active traders have is they'll tend to over leverage size and they blow up their trading accounts because they're not taking as many occurrences or portioning out their trade activity the way they should correctly. And you're an absolute genius at all this. So I wanted to open it up and get your thoughts on what do you mean by trade small, trade often? How does it work? How is it important to the active trading community? Well, it's interesting because, you know, we come from a, um, my background in this business, you know, started on, you know, as a market maker and kind of, if you go back into the early days of, you know, options and, and floor trading and, and kind of proprietary trading, it was always, you know, he or she who traded the biggest, you know, was, it was always, uh, you know, all about size. It was all about trade size. And, you know, we used to kind of, uh, everybody wanted to be the biggest trader out there and everybody wanted to have the biggest positions on everybody wanted to take the most risk. But what we realized over time, and this is through doing just a lot of research, and we're kind of a think tank now, and we've spent the last seven years, you know, building uh, building teams of, of database engineers and, you know, PhDs, real, uh, focusing on, on statistics and, and market-driven research. And what we've determined is... The real way to make money as an individual investor, and then again, there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different aspects to this, but the idea of keeping your size really small is the only way to truly put context and definition around your risk, and then managing your trades early just takes so much reduces the standard deviation of risk so dramatically that it allows you to improve your probability of success and have a chance to be you know a successful retail investor. So it was surprising that of all the things we thought we were going to come up with, with, you know, with respect to our research, we ended up figuring out that, hey, trading small and managing your winners really gave you, and, and being a great, when I say trading small, that means, you know, having lots of positions on to, to statistically improve your number of chances to win. Um, it gave us the, the best, or, or let's call it the optimal statistics around success and so that's why we went with it and it's um it's been fascinating let's put it that way yeah i hear you i know I'm, i used to be a statistician for the ford motor company and i i know i saw a good video from one of your guys you hire well by the way too i liked uh, mike's uh, whiteboard video on the topic good. Too, about multiple occurrences hey one of the things uh, i guess the average retail trader it's in all of our shared interests you yours mine all the traders out there to keep traders alive and healthy and not blow up their trading accounts. And kind of like the law of large numbers, if you flip a coin five times, you might get heads five times in a row. That means you as a trader may take five stops in a row. And if they're large, you might be out of the game or take a long time to recover. But if you do 100 coin flips, you're going to get closer to a standard deviation of 50-50 expected means and all the rest of it. Or mean reversion is another topic we could talk about. But but let me ask, so what's the what would be your advice to the world's traders to – Maybe some, for example, two versus eight contracts is a number I heard in one of your videos. Or doing, say, 300 versus 1,000 shares. Or, you know, I like to day trade six to eight positions on the open minimum on a day's basis. I may be swing trading two or three dozen positions. What would be your advice to the world's traders out there listening, Tom? Because you're brilliant. You know all this stuff. To get them to start thinking about, yeah, you got to do a little more work. you got to babysit more trades. But ultimately, it's in your best interest. Any to helpful tips to help the traders start thinking along those lines. Well, you know, it's been re it, it, it's been a challenge for us to to work through that methodology, um, and and I call it actually a very different set of mechanics than we ever thought existed. But um, you're right, and the analogy you gave was was correct. I mean, it's essentially you're playing a law of large numbers if you are 
if if the if the trade selection and the strategy selection process is all about statistical high probability, if you if you if you believe that fear is overpriced, and we do, and that means you believe that there is, especially using derivatives, there are um, efficient. There's an efficient market, which we obviously do. Um, then, then you can set trades up for yourself that have a statistically better chance of winning than failing. The difference is when you win, you win less than you um, than you lose if you're wrong. So that's why there's a. It's it's actually a math model. It's not a. Um, it's not because you're guessing right. It's just a pure math model. So we prefer to bet less and potentially lose more because since fear is overpriced, we have found that that the statistical chance of winning is actually greater than the numbers themselves suggest. And the reason for that is because you have unlimited losses and limited profitability. All that put together leads us in to, 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 to realizing how important it is, Ken, that the numbers work, which means that if I make 100 trades and if what I'm doing is n does not work because I haven't created enough occurrences, just like you said, if you flip five coins, you're not sure what the outcome. You could easily have four and one, even though it should be 50-50. If you flip 10 coins, you could easily be eight and two as opposed to 50-50. But if you flip 10,000 coins, you're going to be within a half a percent of 50-50. So if you know that statistics are inflated with respect to probabilities, then the whole key to success is creating enough occurrences. And I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head and that's, you know, that's what we learned and it's, it's, um, it's come to fruition. It's taken a lot of research, it's taken a lot of time, but that's how the game has changed for us. It's, it's changed from lots of big trades to tons of small trades. Right, and that's it's a lot more like trading like an accountant or a mathematician than trading trade large or go home kind of thing. Like the floor traders used to say, "I got buddies oh, sure. on the floor, and it's, who's swinging largest size?" And they got all kinds of colorful ways to talk you know, about that. But one, of, <laughs> but one of the interesting things to look at, which is a way that that we can talk about this, when you look at the counterparties, the people that are on the other side of the trades, the big firms that are take the other side of all the trades, what they're most interested in is small trades and when you start to think about that for a second why are they interested in small trades if nobody has any edge they're not interested in small, in small trades because people just don't know what they're doing they're interested in small trades because that's how they make their money lots of small trades it's the same thing if you go into a casino and you see there's a minimum amount you can play for at a table and a maximum amount you can play for at the table because that gives the best odds which is duration in the favor of the casino well it's the same thing for 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 traders and for counterparties. The best odds for the counterparty are lots and lots of small trades. Well, when we started to break that down, we thought, well, we have to give the traders the, you know, the highest potential, um, our highest opportunity for success. And that means lots and lots of small trades. Right. And from a mechanics of the trade, one thing that I, I saw somewhere that you written about you or that you'd written, and you're absolutely right, is one way to not do that or kind of a cautionary note is just because we mean lots of trades don't mean that you should be trading a lot of correlated same sector instruments as a way to hedge or to manage volatility because you know if you're trading all for example you had a really smart look at things like how expected volatility in tech the xlt wasn't as good as energy and so what i'm getting at is you know if you're trading oil or gold or any commodity or whatever whatever you're trading you shouldn't be putting it all in the same sector, like airline stocks are hot lately. By balancing your trade risk, it doesn't mean trading different instruments in the same sector. It means maybe going into a couple different sectors. I don't know if that makes sense, but just a cautionary tale to traders when you're trading multiple instruments, don't put all your eggs in the same sector, but kind of hedge it out across whatever directional volatility you're looking for in your chart patterns, if that makes sense. Um, it, it absolutely does, and you're exactly right. Your ability to understand um, the risks of being too highly correlated. Now, you know, we haven't had a down move in all of 2017. So nobody has had a, a lot of experience in dealing with highly correlated trades because markets, the correlation of trades goes to one on the downside and it separates pretty dramatically to the upside. So nobody's really had to deal with the risk of, you know, high correlation. And I think it is very difficult for individual, you know, self-directed retail traders to understand the risk of, of highly correlated equity trades. So it's important that you do things like, you know, trade a little bonds, trade a little gold, trade a little, you know, whatever, and you don't have to, I'm not talking about necessarily trading futures or anything like that. 
I'm just talking about, you know, decent, uncorrelated diversification inside of a portfolio. You know, equities, whether they be emerging markets or whether they be um, uh, different, you know, equity sectors are pretty highly correlated. But when you get into certain commodities, um, then, then all of a sudden you start to mix things up a little bit. So, you know, bonds, gold, euro, things like that, which all have really nice ETF markets, have virtually no correlation to the equity market. And that is very strong for portfolio diversification. Right. And that makes sense for traders to start thinking about how to test things out. You know, it's, I wanted to ask your advice on this on behalf of all the thousands of traders that are listening to this. I didn't start turning the corner and being successful as a trader until I started uh, using what I say, the math is a lot more important than the chart patterns. I've been classically trained just looking for breakout charts, but the back end of the trade, the unrealized, I use charts to get in, but unrealized P&Ls to exit. And I trade wide, not deep. And one of the things that I found the hard way is that you have to spend a lot more time as a trader thinking about your unrealized P&L and the management of the math side of the equation. And it's not, the, and the problem is, don't get me started about the educators, but most of the educators don't even really trade. So all I got is chart patterns. And what I like about you and what your team at Tasty Trade talks about is, you know, I hardly ever see you talk about a chart. I, I see you talk about the strategy and the math and the mechanics and the real trader stuff that people need to understand. And unfortunately, that's in scarce supply out there. There's very few of us out there telling traders they got to pay a lot more attention to things like, you know, implied volatility and the risk and directional plays and all the language of what you teach. So, you know, I paid so much attention yeah. to this year. That's not out there in the, you know, it's kind of like talking head TV. It's the wrong conversation for the educators to have with their traders. It's not about simplistic crossover patterns on charts. It's all about managing the back end of the math of the trades and the mechanics. And I, I know that that's what you focus on, which is why I personally find so much value from what you teach. But any tips on helping traders think about the math versus just the chart patterns, because that's really where, you know, as profit seeking people, we're in it for the money. We're not in it for, you know, being technical analyst or whatever. We're in it to try and extract value based on volatility out of the market. So any tips on getting traders to think a little more about the math versus just the chart patterns? Well, I've taken a lot of abuse over the years because, um, so I've been doing this for 30, I don't know, let's, let's say 36 years, whatever, it's close enough. Um, I've never used a chart and most professional traders have never used a chart and right. all no counterparties firms like the market making firms have ever used a chart. So charting is strictly a retail, it's kind of a retail phenomenon and it's something that you're right, was brought up through kind of old school um, legacy investor education because it's visual and it's easy to explain and, and easy to learn, but there's no, there's no math supporting it. There's no, um, there's no validation that any of it works. It's just, you know, I mean, it works at the same percentage as any, any other random event. So we knew that if we focused it all on the, re, uh, the, on the individual space with consumers and with individual investors, and we talked about charting, we would just be throwing you know, fuel on the fire. We would not be helping the situation or not improving the situation at all. So we've never looked at charts one time. And I mean, we've built charting platforms because, because on our technology, individual investors want to be able to visualize certain things. And we understand that. And we look at charts as an engagement tool, but we do not look at them as, you know, as having any impact on, you know, making money other than they're just as random as anything else. The, the key to success is understanding that, you know, efficient markets require, um, require an understanding of the math behind them. It's no different than thinking about, you know, where the edge lies in a casino or where the edge lies in any other, you know, mathematical equation or any other business equation and trading is no different. So um, the, only, the, only, the only aspect of trading that's fascinating to us is that you can be on either side of the market. And if the markets are tight and efficient and, and, and there's enough liquidity there, it doesn't matter which side you take. It's just about the strategy that you apply to it. So we have become 100% strategy focused and it's the mechanics that go into those strategies, I believe, that is the genesis of an individual's success. And that's it. You're absolutely right. I, and everybody out there, pay attention to what the man said. Go back and rewind this a little bit. The tra professional traders don't really use charts nearly as much or at all compared to the math and the numbers. You look at high frequency trading algos and dark pools and all the rest of it. It's all math and numbers and Boolean operators and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, scaling in and out, position sizing, 
legging in and out, rolling over your options trades, whatever. It's all about strategy and the math and not the visual chart patterns alone. And traders should start thinking a little bit more towards a professional trader's approach like you've outlined, Tom. Uh, let me ask, uh, we're in the business of trying to take money over and over again out of the market with whatever small edges we've got based on the strategies. And, you know, Tasty Trade, y'all have developed a magnificent think tank. And I'm a huge fan. You're my favorite guy to watch in the whole trading industry, which is high praise because I watch everybody. But you're the best out there because you're really brilliant. And one of the things that I'd encourage traders to do is get involved with Tasty Trade. If you're an options trader, go to Tasty Works and start watching their videos because you can really help. You're part of the solution, not part of the problem that most of the educators are. So I recognize that and I appreciate that. Uh, let me ask if, if you're going to give, I guess uh, we're going to rewind up here in just a couple of minutes, but to help traders, if not crush it, at least stop losing so much, what do they have to start doing a better job of? And when it comes to performance management, back in my corporate days, we use a model of more of, less of. Uh, which is really good for giving feedback to employees, by the way. So more and uh, spouses too in a in a friendly environment. But for the retail traders out there, what should they do if we're going to wrap up uh, the interview? Of, and you've been a big help too. Uh, you gave us a lot of good insights. What and uh, what would be one thing you'd t tell traders to do more of, and what's one thing you'd advise them to do less of to help become more successful at making the math and the numbers and their trading strategy work out more successfully? Well. The, the one thing you want to do more of, it's, this is, you know, we develop these skills. I call it the ability to, uh, to value goods and services, which means it's really to understand kind of in, in the trading world what you're doing. And so th the skill to me is it's a decision-making skill. It's a risk-taking skill. It's a, it's, a, it's a strategic skill. And being able to apply strategies is not something that is inherent in, in the way most people think. So because we don't get a lot of, I, I call it intellectual challenges, but we just, we go through life and there's not a lot of intellectual challenges. Well, one of the things that trading allows you to do is it allows you to create intellectual challenges for yourself based on strategy. And like we said, based on math, based on strategy, based on risk taking. And people just don't have a lot of opportunities to do that. So the most successful individual investors are those that embrace, embrace strategy, engage in the act of, you know, the application of applying strategies and risk. And so the more you do something, um, you become much more proficient at it and you become much more skilled. So, so my first bit of advice to is, is focus on the act of doing. Don't worry about everything else. Focus on the act of doing and focus on the act of, of strategy. It's, it's about risk taking. It's about strategy. It's about, it's about, you know, decent pot odds and, and, and smart strategies and smart, you know, smart non-correlated diversification, all that kind of stuff. It's even about strategy diversification as much as it is about product diversification. And then on the other side of, of the fence, I think that, you know, the mistake that we make is we all think we know something. And we have to get that out of our heads. Like nobody knows, you know, what the market's going to do tomorrow. Just because it's the day before, you know, um, just because it's the day before a holiday or just because it's, you know, some announcement was yesterday or just because the Fed's coming up or just because it's, you know, some other binary event or whatever else it is, or just because you think we're overpriced or you think we're oversold, whatever it is, nobody knows. So there's not a group out there that has an advantage over somebody else. So let's stop focusing on trying to be, the most direct, directionally correct person, and let's focus on being the uh, the person that can apply something in a practical fashion. And I think you'll see a dramatic difference to your trading results. Forget about direction and start focusing on kind of practical application of what you've learned. All right, very well said. Completely agree. It's a uh... Tom, it's been a real pleasure. You're, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. You're one of the trading heroes out there, one of the legends in the industry. And uh, I say that to encourage traders to listen to you and get involved at your site and your your videos and your business and all the rest of it. But, you know, it's in all of our shared goal, our shared mission to help traders make more and lose less. And I think, you know, the tips you've outlined today will go a long ways toward helping them rethink Maybe a good time for the new year, but start rethinking how to focus on a more strategic math and numbers-based approach rather than just directional charts and be able to do it more intelligently. So uh, everybody, be sure to visit www.tastytrade.com. Uh, and if you're an options trader looking for a great brokerage, uh, go to Tasty Works. 
Uh, and um, Tom Salzmoff, thank you very much. It was great seeing you at the Money Show as a keynote speaker at the Las Vegas Traders Expo, too. It's uh, always a pleasure to hear your words because you know what you're talking about. And I personally learn a lot from you, which is uh, which is saying something because I've been doing that. I've traded millions of dollars worth of stocks and ETFs and trying to focus on options now. So thanks for your help. And uh, thank you for all your, your kind words of wisdom. You're one of the guys worth listening to out there. Thanks so much, Ken. This was awesome. Appreciate it.